Military operations in the Kursk region are very dynamic, units of the Ukrainian army operate in unexpected places. Kirill Sazanov, an officer of the armed forces of Ukraine, told the local press. The situation in Kursk is changing dynamically. This change is happening every hour and every minute. Currently, there is not even an actual line of contact there, as in the Donetsk region. For example, children rushed forward to support other positions and captured enemy equipment, said the Ukrainian fighter. According to Sazanov, Russia has transferred more than 35,000 personnel to the Kursk region. He stressed that it is too early to draw other conclusions from the current situation, time and clear plans are needed for the necessary results. Yes, if we analyze the map of yesterday's battles in Kursk, we can say that if everything goes as we planned and the enemy does not retreat, then the Russians may fall into a trap. But, as I said, if everything goes as we planned, the officer of the Ukrainian army noted. The Ukrainian military captured two more residential areas in Kursk during the last day. We are talking about Durivka and Vitrian villages. According to information, Ukrainians also entered Jurovli settlement. Recall, Ukrainian forces launched new attacks into Russia's Kursk region, just a few kilometers from the salient territory captured by Ukrainian forces since the start of the incursion and Russia's counteroffensive. Russian forces also continue their counterattack throughout the Ukrainian salient. Moscow says they have recaptured 10 settlements however there is no visual confirmation of this claim at this stage. While Ukrainian forces are trying to defend their gains, they have also launched additional attacks outside of the salient, making gains in Glushkovsky district. Geolocated footage indicates that Ukrainian infantry have advanced across the border and into southwestern Tetkino about 40 kilometers southwest of the current Ukrainian salient. Ukrainian armored vehicles and infantry bypassed Russian anti-tank obstacles near the border southwest of Novi Put, suggesting that Russian forces were unprepared to use the barriers to repel Ukrainian cross-border assaults. During the massive attacks on Ukraine, the Russian Federation is particularly brutally striking settlements that have large Jewish communities. The internet suspects that this may not be just a coincidence. The cities of Uman, Nipa, Odessa and others, which have close ties with Jews, appear almost daily in military reports due to Russian strikes. The Russian Federation bombs these peaceful settlements with particular cruelty, which may not be a coincidence. This fact is actively discussed by supporters of the Iranian IRGC on the internet. According to Dialogua media outlet, Iranians are especially happy about the flights to Oman, a holy place for Jews. On its territory is the grave of the founder of Hasidism, Rabbi Nachman of Bratslav, which is visited annually by thousands of pilgrims. In public groups dedicated to the IRGC, they very actively talk about the fact that Moscow pays for missiles and kamikaze drones not only with its own resources, but also with strikes on Jewish places in Ukraine. Recall that recently information appeared about the arrival of a batch of short-range ballistic missiles from Iran to the Russian Federation. It is expected that the Russian armed forces will begin using them for strikes on Ukraine in the coming weeks. Today, Jews play a major role in repelling Russian aggression in Ukraine. A huge number of ethnic Jews are fighting in the Ukrainian defense forces, sacrificing their health and lives. Let us recall that yesterday, September the 12th, the funeral of the fallen defender of Ukraine, Matityahu Anton Samborsky, the son of the country's chief rabbi, Mosh Azman, took place. The inconsolable father made a statement in which he noted that the current war is a struggle between good and evil. Evil is limited. Its essence is to kill, destroy, annihilate. 
and good is infinite. It means to love, build, grow, help. I am sure that together we will dispel this evil and it will disappear. The rabbi declared. Israeli military journalist Sergei Oslender also spoke out on Telegram. He emphasized the insignificance of Russian accusations against Ukraine. The son of the chief rabbi of Ukraine, Mosh Azman, Anton, who served in the armed forces of Ukraine, died in the war that Russia started to denazify Ukraine. As it was said in the famous quote attributed to Churchill, the fascists of the future will call themselves anti-fascists. So, just to understand, Ukrainian Jews are dying fighting against Russian fascists who came to liberate them from the Nazism that they themselves invented. The journalist wrote, Indicative in this situation is the position of the Israeli authorities who, fearing to spoil relations with the Kremlin, ignore the threatening strengthening of cooperation between the Russian Federation and Iran, the growth of anti-Semitism in Russia and attacks on Jews in Ukraine.